And now we have Sawsbuck. This elegant deer is one of the fifth generation's most creative Pokemon. Having different forms based on the four seasons is, even if just aesthetic, still quite inspiring. And this can even be seen in its name. Obviously, a buck is a male deer, but the letters preceding buck, S-A-W-S, stand for summer, autumn, winter, and spring. This makes Sawsbuck a triumph of design. Today, we'll be examining if Sawsbuck was able to channel its season form changing into any sort of competitive success. And so, we ask, how good was Sawsbuck? actually and in this video we'll be going over these competitive formats in early generation 5 rain and sand were the initially dominant weathers eventually with nine tails as drought fueling terrifying chlorophyll sweepers sun teams proved they were a force to be reckoned with too most of these defining chloro sweepers like venusaur lilligant and victory bell were special attackers sawsbuck attacking from the physical side with a powerful stab return or double edge allowed it to tear through the laddie twins and dragonite a massive threat to sun teams after a boost in a way that was the envy of its special attacking counterparts sawsbuck's huge natural speed also meant that under sun it outsped the fastest pokemon around scarf terrakion and latios without needing max speed meaning it could invest its remaining evs in bulk and crucially make itself less vulnerable to dragonite's extreme speed especially since its grass stab horn leech had an incredible healing effect thus offsetting its life or recoil Another major benefit Sawsbuck had was its access to Jump Kick or Nature Power, the latter of which would become Earthquake. This was huge because it could destroy Heatran on its own, meaning it wasn't reliant on Dugtrio to remove it before it could be threatening. And unlike Sun teammates Venusaur and Volcarona, Sawsbuck wasn't giving up on more valuable moves to fit its Heatran destroying move. Once Sawsbuck got a Swords Dance under Sun, it was quite tough to stop for a significant portion of OU, and shredded Rain teams in particular. Now of course it has some notable flaws, it was brutally vulnerable to the most common priority moves in OU, it was a Sun Sweeper countered by Skarmory, it had to choose between running Jump Kick and Nature Power, and therefore between being countered by Jirachi or Ferrothorn, and finally, Chlorophyll Sweeper and Sun Team spots were tough to compete for. Nevertheless, Saucebuck had a legitimate niche in the fifth generation of OU, and it wasn't a gimmick by any means, as evidenced by the many occasions of which it tore through the tier staple. Of course, Saucebuck was far from a true OU Pokemon, and so of course it went on a journey through the lower tiers. Sunless Saucebuck, while possessing many interesting interesting qualities was quite flawed by virtue of its weakness laden typing and meager bulk while not quite being the offensive terror it would need to be to make up for it. Sawsbuck passed through UU uneventfully. It had slight potential for a substitute baton pass set in RU which could prey on a Lobomola and exploit common switch-ins like Escavalier for the benefits of its teammates but this was too niche and not nearly worthwhile enough considering how utterly non-existent Sawsbuck's defensive utility was. As such it continued on down to NU. There it finally came into its own as an excellent standalone Pokemon. Pokemon. Once again, being a physical grass type was a unique distinguishing factor in contrast to the tier's other offensive grass type options in Superior, Ludicolo, and Executor, but that was far from Sawsbuck's only draw. Not needing to run Chlorophyll, Sawsbuck made use of another one of its excellent abilities, Sap Sipper, which turned its grass resistance into an immunity, which was immensely valuable on a Pokemon as frail and thus struggling to switch as Sawsbuck. But not just any old immunity to grass, it was one that would also grant Sawsbuck a plus one attack boost if it was hit by such a move. This granted Sawsbuck the rare trait of being able to turn an opponent's grass type moves into a legitimate liability. And that's not a bad thing to have in a tier with as many Giga Drains as NU did. The same Swords Dance 3 attack set Sawsbuck had wielded to great effect on OU Sun Team was also devastatingly powerful against a majority of NU, with a fantastic speed tier and coverage against pretty much everything. However, Sawsbuck wasn't beholden to it. Well, it wasn't even beholden to going SD3 attacks, as it could slot substitute or even baton pass into the set over over nature power. The latter letting it hand off its SDs made it a potentially game-breaking support Pokemon while still retaining its offensive threat. However, Sawsbuck could switch gears entirely with its Choice Scarf set, which turned it into one of the tier's best revenge killers and late game cleaner. It crucially outran Shell Smash Caracossa after a boost and didn't have any problem with instantly posing a threat to the fragile offensive threats it was tasked with revenge killing or tearing through. Sawsbuck was also excellent at keeping precise momentum with its Scarf set's U-turn-esque use of Baton Pass. Some players experimented with its fourth move slot too. Sure, nature power was fine and everything, but there was nothing quite like taking advantage of a force switch to pull off aromatherapy, especially in a tier where Aloma Mola scalded and toxic everything within reach. Sawsbuck was an outstanding Pokemon that performed consistently in battle and fit on a huge variety of different teams. And as such, it was the defining piece of the fifth generation of NU, and thus capping off a largely successful debut generation for itself.
With the effect of weather abilities no longer being permanent in Generation 6, chlorophyll spam in OU was a thing of the past, and thus Saucebuck was unable to reprise any sort of the role it had previously had. This was bittersweet since it made its debut generation more of a special experience, but still, it had to have been nice to be in OU. This was especially tough to take since power creep meant Saucebuck had greater difficulties in the lower tiers now too. It had some slight success at some points in NU, mostly on Sun teams, but those were rare, and there wasn't exactly a shortage of Sun abusing competition, and thus Saucebuck's brief appearances dropped off into non-usage. It fell to the newly created PU, and even all the way down there, it struggled to leave any sort of impact. It was pretty much entirely outclassed by an outstanding physical grass type in Leafeon, who is one of the best Pokemon in the tier. In the face of Leafeon's superior stats and access to knockoff, this was as deflating a death knell as any. Technically, Saucebuck could use its grass immunity to do something with the Choice Scarf set, but this was really splitting hairs to find some semblance of viability for a Pokemon that you weren't going to actually use in any sort of serious situation because it was so thoroughly outclassed. As such, Saucebuck dropped to untiered, and so the sixth generation wasn't entirely forgettable for it, but even its few appearances in NU weren't that remarkable, as they didn't leave any sort of impact at all. Generation 7 came around and so did Saucebuck's second attempt to establish some sort of PU niche. Sadly, it was mostly outclassed by Leafeon once again. Now, technically, Saucebuck's access to jump kick meant that it did have a significant differentiating factor as a Sun Sweeper, whereas Leafeon was completely walled by Aggron and Alolan Sandslash. Saucebuck ripped through them instantly. However, this and Saucebuck's normal stab were not enough to compensate for Leafeon's all-around superiority. Plus, for Saucebuck's advantages, it also came with a million more crippling flaws. For example, being absolutely eviscerated by Girder's Mach Punch and Scarf Primeape's Close Combat, whereas Leafeon dominated both. Sure, Saucebuck wasn't completely unviable or anything, but there was a reason why it was used so little that it once again dropped into the lowest of tiering depth, that being untiered. And so Generation 7 was even harsher on Saucebuck than the previous one, and it was in dire, dire need of some upgrades. And that's it, so how good was Saucebuck actually? Well, it had a fascinating debut generation, being one of the best examples of a lower tier Pokemon vaulted into genuine OU viability. As a standalone Pokemon, it established itself as a cornerstone of NU, with a unique powerful place in the metagame. Sadly, since that intriguing, exciting debut, things have gone downhill for our seasoned friend, pardon the pun. Its relatively low stats and off-hindering half-normal typing have been letting it down, and it's tough to compete with something as good as Leafia. Game Freak really should bestow upon Saucebuck something cool and new. Perhaps some new half typings or moves or stats or abilities to do with its seasonal form. And we look forward to that day. And if Stantler can get a new evolution, I'm sure Saucebuck is overdue for something. Maybe, probably not. Thanks for watching, everyone. And as always, if you liked the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to False Swipe Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content. And in the comments, I want to know what do you think about competitive Saucebuck? How would you buff it to put it over other chlorophyll sweepers? Whatever it is, let me know in the comments. And thank you so much to our patrons for continued support of our videos. And thank you to everyone everyone else watching as well. And follow my crew on these social media platforms. And that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.